Hello everyone, it's Tales from Studio Wildfare here. Just going to take a quick look at building some maps, or building a map using the brand new um, sample map tile pack that I've about to release. Um, in uh, with a comes with a uh, Fantasy Grounds uh, art asset module, so you can use it for building maps in Fantasy Grounds. So let's have a have a quick little look at building a map in Fantasy Grounds. So start with um, opening up the images panel and just create a blank a blank map canvas. So let's just pop that up to the top there. Close this images panel. Now the first thing we need to do, uh, apart from making the, the canvas larger so that we have a nice space to work on, is we need to set up the grid. So click on the little grid icon, which will bring up the grid op options for the canvas. Change it from the default 50 to 180. 180 is the grid size I use for pretty much all of all of my virtual tabletop uh, maps. It, it results in a scale reference of three pixels to every every real world inch. Now with that set up, now we need to grab our assets. So click on the assets button. Now I'm going to find my map tile sample pack and open it up. So I'll bring the the assets over here, make it bigger so I've got a, a lot that I can look through, and I'll make the map map bigger as well. Okay, so the next the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the tile stamping tool because that's what we will be using to put uh, to stamp down our tiles. So uh, first we click on layers, then we click on the tile tool. So we have the tile tool accepted, uh, selected. Now now we need to to preset this box with a bit of data. So what we do is come over to just start with the floors, grab one of the default floors and pop it in there. Now with that with that in that tooltip, all of these pieces that we pop down will be scaled correctly. If you use the selection tool, it seems to, or at least it does on my system, it seems to scale things a little bit incorrectly. Um, I don't know whether that's a bug or a feature, but um, I just recommend you know avoid it, avoid the layer selection tool like the plague. Just use the tile stamper tool and have it have a preset, and you'll be perfectly fine. So let's um, let's start by popping down some tiles. So let's just create a create a little uh, let's create a room here. So I'll just. So these are going to be our floor. Then let's just say we have a little corridor. It comes off this room. It comes around. I'm just I'm just randomly grabbing tiles. And let's say it comes back around here, and then it comes to another slightly larger room. So let's give it this interesting texture around the outside. So you'll notice that these have, these tiles have the pink marble floor, but there's a, a blue strip running through the center. That just makes it something a little bit different, a little bit interesting. Let's go to the other one. So that one. You know, maybe the maybe the dungeon continues off. So let's just let's just use work with that for the moment. So that's our that's our basic floor plan. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder called I'm going to call it floor. And this is where I'm going to put all of my floor tiles. So I just select all those, drag and drop. Look, they're in there. So they're in my floor. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wall in here. So I'm going to come back to uh, back to the top folder, go from there to the pink marble walls. There we go. And let's just start putting in our walls. Plop in the corner. 
corners. There we go. So it's quite quite quick to, to build through, build up a, a little dungeon. It's just a case of dropping them in. Gives the gives the shadowing. So here I've got a here I've got a doorway. Now I put the corners which I call cornerstones and doorways. I put those in a separate folder, mainly so that you'd, it's easy to find them instead of having to sort of search through all the different wall sections. So I go into the folder. There's a door. There's a doorway section, which is, as you can see, two cornerstones together. And just you know, quickly plop it in there, and you've got your your doorway. This is a this is going to be a turn, so I'm going to need a little cornerstone here. There we go. And then, whoops, whoops, I went back up to the top. Back to here. And then we need this one. There we go. And we've got our, got our turn. So then we need. So we need a few more walls. Coming down here. Uh, then we need the other side. As you can see, I'm just I'm just quickly grabbing grabbing the tiles, putting them in. Because everything because we've set this tool up, everything snaps nicely to the grid. And because we've because we've actually set the grid as well and it snaps all to the same scale. Works quite well. Uh, another cornerstone, that one there. So I'll just quickly do this passage over the other side. Oops. And then we need that one. Oh, too far away. And that one. So that could, you know, that could continue off to the rest of the dungeon. Now we've got. doorway here and here. So again up to the cornerstones. And it's just a case of finding the doorway on the right side. And there we there we go, we're done. So that's really quick, really quick little build. Um, like you could go and put so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these into another folder. Call it walls. There we go. So let's select all those layers book into walls there we go so that that sort of orders everything nicely um, you can also lock them lock them down now you might also want to put in some features like for example doors so let's let's create another folder call it features now features could be props it could be tables chairs um, uh, boxes, wine casks, um, traps, whatever you like. Um, I usually put that into a features folder between, whoop, there we go, between my walls folder and my floor folder. That way it's getting the shadows of the walls folder and it's above the floor folder obviously. So let's let's have a look at how that works with putting in some doors. So let's just say we're going to put a door here, door here, and a door here. So I've got a basic door. Dunk. There we go. Now this this is a closed door. Now you could spin it round, or you could mirror it. Um, but let's just have it there like that. Um, now again, put it into the right folder. So features. So there we go. It's as you can see, the shadowing gives it makes it look. Like it's it belongs in the map. It's 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 meant to be there. So let's create another door. So spin this one around. There we go. And again, pop it into the features folder. And there we go. That's that's how it works. Now um, let's just say that we we've created an out outdoor um, area, and we've these these walls are double sided. So let's actually put the put the extra wall here. So where is it? So 
One of those. One of those. One of those. Now, I'll put those. Put those into my walls folder. Dunk. Oops. There we go. So, one thing that I that you does need to go over the top of the walls are our windows because the windows the windows take advantage of the already existing shadows from the walls so here's one of our windows there it is so let's turn it around the right way and then you can just boop, pop it in place and there you go there's a window so you could pop it there pop it there um, wherever it happens to work well now another another now I use, need to keep these windows um, in a, I usually put them in like a, a folder you know another another it would be like feature or special effects um, and that would be my my very top folder because that that has to be rendered over the top of the wall um, now one other feature that the sample pack has is it has the ability to create a, a tile like an edging to the floor because you could have a floor over the top of another floor so for example uh, so let's put down a piece of so let's just say there's a um, you know, there's a bit of floor sticking out here for some reason uh, let's just pop that inside our floor folder there we go now we need to give that an edge because there could be grass or something underneath that so let's in the in the floor floor folder we've got a floor edge folder and it's got these pieces now these pieces are used to create the edge of the uh, floor as I'll just demonstrate here we'll create there put there Corner piece, there we go, one of these, and one of those. So again, drag these into the floor section. Um, if you ever have a ch hard time getting your file, getting your layers into the correct, correct folder, just drag the folder up to the very top, select them, pop them in place, then just you know reorder the folders. there we go so we've got like a little it could be a little patio so maybe we've got um, maybe we've got a different set or a different texture underneath so for example if I go right up to the top um, so all the all the pink stuff is the is the um, these uh, map tile sample pack so here's another pack that I've got called the alien hive and let's just say there's you know there's another floor underneath this so we come along, grab out, the, grab out the alien hive, start popping them down. Now because, because all of my map tiles all use the 180 uh, pixel grid, these will just mesh straight in with it. Like it'll obviously look different, but we're going to do something with that. So let's just say, let's just call this the alien, alien floor. There we go pop those inside there and then we'll drag this folder to the very bottom so there you go so now you can see that there's an edging that looks like it belongs in place of this this uh, pink pink marble and that's basically how you build a dungeon in fantasy grounds unity with um, with my map tiles it's quite quick quite easy um, one experimental uh, feature that I'm working on uh, is the line of sight system. So let me just uh, lock down all these layers. Oops. There we go. So I shouldn't accidentally move anything. And I'll pop in. Let's just say there's a character coming in here. Pop in this guy. Cool. Get rid of, the, rid of 
that. And let's turn on, so go to game mode and turn on line of sight. And then select the assassin. So here we see that the line of sight uh, system is detecting the walls. Now, as I said, it's with with the map tiles that I'm creating, it's a little bit experimental because as you can see, there's a bit of bleed through here. But we're, it's starting to get to what we want. So, you know, the character comes along here, does a bit of exploring. Oh, there's another passageway. Let's go further up here. Oops. Helps if they don't um, magically teleport through the walls. And now I haven't added in the detail to, for the door, and I haven't added in the information for the for the window. But um, when you're creating your your map, just you know, pop in a window there. Let's see if we can see if we can quickly do it now. So just. see if that works as a window. So this is this is the problem with um, why this is a bit experimental is that each each wall section has its own line of sight information um, which is why it's a bit on the experimental side and why it's sort of creating this little weird bit. But the the objective is there. Let's see. Yep, open. Select this, select this character. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to render. Maybe that's just my system being a bit weird. Oh, as I said, it is a bit experimental, but it shows you how quickly you can just build yourself a dungeon, even if you want to just create the the walls, the line of sight walls yourself, the dungeon itself is really easy. The artwork is really easy to place down and create. I hope you've enjoyed this um, video and it's, I hope it's given you lots of ideas for uh, adventure maps that you can create with the map tile art assets that I've um, got available. Uh, this is Tales from Studio Wildfire. You can check out, um, check out my stuff at uh, patreon.com slash wildfur or just go to wildfur.com. Thank you very much and happy gaming.